All right, let's do the molecular orbital diagram for an oxygen molecule, that's O2. Now, the molecular orbitals differ from atomic orbitals in that you don't have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, etc. Those two atomic orbitals, one from one oxygen, one from the other, mix together to form what we call molecular orbitals. Now, the 1s2 from one atom and the 1s2 from the other atom will mix together to make a sigma 1s and a sigma 1s antibonding orbital. The 2s2 and 2s2 will mix together to make sigma 2s and sigma 2s antibonding. And then the p orbitals will mix. Now, p, there are three uh, orbitals, like 2px, 2py, 2pz, in each of the atoms. And when they mix together, you get six molecular orbitals, a sigma 2p, a pi 2p a pi 2p star, and a sigma 2p star. The stars are anti-bonding orbitals. Now, this is the molecular orbital diagram for O2, and it looks the same for F2 and Ne2, like oxygen and onward in the periodic table. For N2, C2, and B2, and onward, these two orbitals, the pi 2p and the sigma 2p, are actually switched. Now, the reason for that is that the electron configurations of the atoms up to nitrogen have only unpaired electrons in the 2p. You get 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, and because of, I think it's Hund's rule, you have to spread those three electrons in nitrogen out over the 2px, 2py, 2pz orbitals in the 2p subshell. But once you get to oxygen, you have a fourth electron going to the 2p. It's 2p4. Thus, you have a pair, a, a, because of the pairing of those electrons in the 2p, you end up with extra repulsion, and that's what causes it to be sigma 2p, pi 2p, then pi 2p antibonding, and sigma 2p antibonding. Long story short, nitrogen and before, it's the same, but these two are switched. Cool? Anyways, let's fill in the electrons for the O2. Now, I've included the, uh, the inner shell here. Some teachers won't do that for you. Oxygen, we usually say it brings six electrons, but because I've included the inner shells, each oxygen's actually bringing eight electrons. That shouldn't be a surprise because it's the eighth atom in the periodic table. Thus, I need, in this diagram, 16 electrons. So, Aufbau principle from the bottom up and Hund's rule, spread them out before you double them up. Here we go. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Done. This is the molecular orbital diagram for O2. Now, it is a paramagnetic molecule because we have unpaired electrons. Another question you could be asked is, what's the bond order? The bond order is the number of electrons in bonding orbitals minus the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals. And then I think you cut it in half, but let's find it. Uh, in bonding orbitals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm looking at all the ones that don't have a star on it. And subtract the number in antibonding orbitals. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And then you have to divide that difference by two. So 10 minus six gives four. And then four divided by two is two. So my bond order here is two. It's a nice whole number, which means it's a nice stable molecule which you should have expected because we're breathing oxygen right now. And this is your molecular orbital diagram. Uh, I don't even know if I have that much more to add other than 
if you were asked for O2 minus, you would have added one extra electron. If you were asked for O2 two minus, you would have added another electron there. If you were asked for O2 plus, then you would have not put in that last red one. And if you were asked for O2 two plus, you wouldn't have put that one in either. You're literally just adding and subtracting electrons as needed according to Hund's rule and the Aufbau principle. Cool? Hopefully that clears things up for you. And at the very least, hopefully I drew it for you and that was your homework. Bam! Best of luck to you.